In the winter of 2013, something happened to me. Something that changed how I think about science and its impact on our life. And this was the scene. My son and I were waiting for the final raffle prize winners to be selected from thousands of participants at one of the big festivals in Kaust, the institute I'm proud to work in in Saudi Arabia. When he asked me whether he, my wife and I, could win the three top raffle prizes, <laughs> it only took a second to answer him that, given our luck, it is highly unlikely. But I paused for a moment, and I thought about it and said, we might have a chance if this raffle behaves like Brownian motion. As predicted, we did not win a single prize in the raffle. <laughs> out of many, actually. But I won something far more valuable. And this is what I would like to share with you. And I will do this in three parts. In part one, I will tell you what Brownian motion is and what I meant by what I had said to my son about the raffle and this motion. In part two, I will tell you how this brief conversation led fundamental science to become my key word as a researcher. This came after I had spent more than 10 years studying applied science as a pharmacy undergraduate in my country, Egypt, and then as an applied chemistry PhD student in Japan. And I'll tell you how this brief conversation led my fundamental work to appear three times in a top-tier journal. In part three, I will demystify and break down the title of my talk, The Subtle Secret of Life, and describe why you, as a parent, you, as a student, and any of you who are not directly involved in scientific research should care. So, what is Brownian motion? It's not brownies, as my little daughter always thinks. It's something rather deep, and I will make it simple. This part of the story begins with a seemingly simple sounding question. If all of the scientific knowledge on Earth were to be destroyed, and only one sentence that contains the most information has to be passed to the next generation. What would this be? It has to be the most fundamental scientific fact that man was able to reach. So the next generation can use it to build the civilization again. Many scientists believe that it is the atomic fact. I'm sure that you know that all things are made of atoms. These little particles that are in perpetual motion, attracting or repelling each other. But there is one type of motion that you probably haven't heard of. Brownian motion, named after Robert Brown, who was the first one to observe this motion. The story of Brownian motion started in Scotland almost 200 years ago, 18. 27. 1827, an eminent microscopist, Robert Brown, was working in his lab. And while examining pollen grains in water by using his primitive microscope, Brown observed something, something that per the standards of his era was unusual. He observed this minute particles executing continuous, mysterious, jittery motion in the water. Brown was so smart to rule out the hypothesis that the motion was life-related. But, unfortunately, he did not provide a theory to explain this motion. Almost a century later, 1905, a scientist who was interested in Brown's observations at that time gave a very simple explanation of Brownian motion, making one of his first big discoveries in science. His name is Albert Einstein. Einstein said, the motion of pollen grains is caused by millions of tiny water molecules colliding with the bigger particles, causing them to move in a jittery, 
random way. And this provided a convincing evidence that atoms and molecules exist and are in motion. You might be thinking, hey, wait a minute, what does this mean for me? The answer is, Brownian motion is far closer to you than you would imagine. And in fact, it is affecting every moment of your life. You know, when you are walking outside or waiting for the bus in summer, we all know this hot and the uncomfortable feeling. Generally speaking, this is because the temperature is high. But fundamentally, this happens because the air molecules have high energy and move so fast in a jittery, random way. The air molecules collide with your skin so strongly, giving energy to whatever molecules in your skin. These molecules respond and move so fast, making you feel hot and uncomfortable. So, what do you do? You rush into an air-conditioned building, or into an air-conditioned bus, where the air molecules move much slower. And again, molecules of your skin lose their energies back to the air, and you feel comfortable again. Did you know that people on our gorgeous planet spent more than $100 billion last year buying ACs? Little did they know that what they were doing was just slowing down or speeding up Brownian motion. And this is what you should feel when you increase or decrease the temperature of your room by using your AC remote control. Speed up and slow down. Speed up and slow down. It's even closer to you than that. Imagine, imagine that there is an important interaction that has to happen between two molecules inside a cell in your body. This interaction is urgent and crucial to the life of the cell. Imagine this big building is a cell and it's filled with so many molecules. And at one extreme corner of the building, the first molecule is located, and it is the shape of a key. And at the opposite extreme corner, the second molecule is located, and it is the shape of a lock. These two molecules have to move, enter the rooms, collide with other molecules, and scan the space until they find each other by chance and interact, such that the interaction should take place on this stage over the palm of my hand. What are the chances that the two molecules will arrive in my hand at the same time and interact? And how long should I wait for this interaction to happen? One day? One week? A year? In fact, I will not wait that long, because the two molecules will arrive in my hand and interact within a few seconds. This happens because the two molecules moving via Brownian motion scan the space so fast and experience one trillion collisions per second with other molecules as trials to find each other. This fast speed and the huge number of collisions or trials increase the probability that the two molecules will arrive in my hand at the same time. And then the crucial interaction happens to save the life of the cell. That's why some scientists believe that Brownian motion is the subtle secret of life. Isn't it? It is indeed the subtle engine of life. This takes me back to my conversation with my son. If we have 3,000 participants in the raffle, and if we repeat the draw at a rate of one draw per second, we need about 1,000 years to see my son, my wife, and I win the three prizes consecutively. But actually, Brownian motion shows collisions or trials at a rate of one trillion per second. And with just a little imagination, and if the raffle had as many trials per second as the collisions, one would expect that we will win the three prizes 
50 times in a second. This conversation led me to this thought. I said to myself, if an event that seems unlikely to us can actually happen, then the question is, what kind of unlikely events could happen during Brownian motion? I chose DNA as a model molecule, and then came up with a theoretical framework based on the principle of probability, or the raffle draw. And at the end, we were able to identify what the Brownian motion of DNA looks like. For any molecule in nature, depending on the number and directions of collisions, Sometimes the molecules move faster, and sometimes move slower. We found that, unlike many molecules, when DNA moves faster, it moves with short steps. And when DNA moves slower, it moves with long steps. And in order to bring these results closer to your imagination, I'm going to show you something. By the show of hands, who watched the incredible part one? Great. I would like to introduce to you all molecules of nature competing with DNA in a race, and the race is led by the incredible mechanism. Everything is on track, and once the race starts, the incredible mechanism controls the motion of DNA. He says, go, go, go fast with short steps, only short steps. What? You are moving too fast. You are moving too fast, back, go slow, with long steps, only long steps. Balance your motion, be close to the other molecules, and then DNA finishes the race very close to the other molecules, but with a drastically different scenario. And we scientists don't understand this mechanism till today. And this gives you at a glance the piece of fundamental science that we uncovered about DNA. Why should you care about fundamental science? Let me ask the question in a different way. What is the impact of science that we care most and feel excited about in our daily life? I believe that many of us care most about the applications, especially the state-of-the-art technologies, our smartphones, our noise-canceling headphones, and other gadgets. Indeed, they made our life easier. No question about that. But we have to learn that the technologies in these devices will die very soon and will be replaced by new ones. Last year, I bought an iPhone, and I was happy with it. But next year, I'm going to buy the new iPhone. Why? To get the new technologies. However, fundamental science, the foundation of the iPhone and these technologies, never fades and never dies. And this is what remains. Let me give you an example. Albert Einstein developed the general theory of relativity more than 100 years ago. People in his era did not know whether it could be used to make something useful. But look at it now. How many applications are using Einstein theories? Starting from mobile phone and their GPS to the International Space Station. Einstein theories helped us to put satellites around Earth and to reach Mars. What we learned about fundamental science 100 years ago is what we see today as groundbreaking technologies. And what we learn about fundamental science right now like the science we learned about Brownian motion of DNA, is the window through which we see the groundbreaking applications of the future. But the important question is, do we really care? Well, it seems that we don't care enough. Here is a latest report about funding fundamental science Funds assigned to increase our fundamental knowledge are decreasing year after year. We are competing for developing the applications and forgot about fundamental science that is the foundation of those applications. 
Let me give you another example. In 2002, I bought this 128 megabyte flash drive to back up the files of my master thesis. I can't describe to you how happy and impressed I was when I held it in my hand for the first time. 15 years later, I bought the 32 gigabyte flash drive. Although it was 250 times as spacious as my older drive and much faster. Personally, I was not that impressed. Why was that? I did not figure out the answer until, until my daughter came to me one day and asked for help in her school presentation. I still remember this day. The title of her presentation was, Are we living in the era of original innovations or iterations? Meaning copying and repeating the applications. Since and only since I have read this inspiring title, I realized that what we witness in many of today's gadgets are simply repetitions. You have to know that our human civilization is like an inverted pyramid. We start with an innovative fundamental idea, and then we develop the applications and start building the pyramid. We start with fast growth, but as we continue and approach the pace of the pyramid, we are repeating the applications with slower growth. The only solution to this problem is to learn a new fundamental piece of science and plant it to push our civilization forward again. Perhaps. Perhaps one day we could even invent something to make me win in the raffles. But for now, as far as my luck at raffles, let's just say I still haven't won my dream car. But every time I attend the raffle, I always say, I have already won. I have already chosen my path to do fundamental research. And this was for me. And for you, here are my four messages. My message to our institutes is, fundamental research is the vehicle for innovations, and its funding is under threat. It continues to globally fall below 25%. Please, raise more funding to do fundamental research. My message to our students is, Start opening more windows in fundamental knowledge to make the future closer and to give our children and grandchildren the chance to find something to build their future on. My message to parents is encourage your kids to watch documentaries about science. There are many stories as interesting as Avengers and the Incredibles, like the story of Brown Yamush. When kids become interested in science the way they do in watching movies, our civilization will jump to the next level. And lastly, my message to everyone for that matter is, if we want to transfer a piece of knowledge to the next generation, it will be a fundamental fact, not a Lamborghini or the latest iPhone. And if we really want to know the subtle secret of health happiness, and life. We have to learn the fundamentals of ourselves, our nature, and our universe. Then, and only then, we will get the wisdom, the keys, and the knowledge with which we can unlock the subtle secret of life. Thank you.